Welcome back to part two of this Athard GP7 rebuild. The first video, we went ahead and rebuilt the chassis that's on it. This video here, I'm going to show you how I custom make these hand railings. I haven't really touched on it in, in this in depth in other videos where I showed you where I made hand railings at. So this is kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial. So if you want to learn how to make hand railings, just watch this video. If you want to see the whole revival on this Milwaukee Road GP7 Atherin Blue Box, check out the video over here, over here. I don't. If I figure out how to get those little things in there, they'll show up when you're looking at it. So let's get underway with knocking, knocking this out. Give me that. Fired up on building these railings by hand. I find having a couple of needle nose pliers, a side cutter, and of course these stanchions. These are 3 8 inch long stanchions made by A line. They've even got a part number. I don't know what part number. Here's one of those is the part number. It's going to take a mess of them. Pour these out and get them kind of out of my way. I use one of these when I'm working on hand railings because I'm old and going blind. Makes it so my eyes don't hurt at the end of the day. When I get started on there, you gotta you gotta have these couple little bends right here because it goes towards the back of the loco. Them bends can be, you know, so you gotta have a 90. This is gonna be for the other side. So you you take it and you 90 it down. So you've got a nice sharp bend right there. And a lot, there's a lot of eyeballing going on. And then you gotta bake another 90 just right after it have it sticking out about so far and if you got thinner wire or brass wire of course this is quite a bit easier this is I don't know what the hell I managed to pick up here so I'm going to take it it's sticking out there just a little bit and I'm going to bend it if it works out right down like this and when it's all said and done I've got a little little bend like that now I see that they're not completely at 90 degrees lots of tweaking that has to take place also. I made that for this side. I was trying to make it for this side. As you see now, it bends out instead of bending in. There, or maybe I can use it for the ends over here. So oh, there's just always something. Always got to kind of know what you're doing. A lot of fiddle farting that goes on. You get a couple stanchions in there. You bend your hook for what hooks up into the steps. I had about nine cups of coffee today. And then if you're really lucky, they line up with your stanchions. Oh, sure. It's got to be an easier way. Usually when I make these, of course, it takes two, three hours for a complete set. But, you know, saves you that $20 having to buy them off of eBay. So that makes it worth it. Get that down in there. And just everything is just so loose until you get it all done. And then it's not bad at all. Now, if you leave that wire long enough, it goes through for the bottom of these steps. While you're busy working on it, you can take this tab that's sitting here and you can give it a bend so it quits falling out unless you wanted to glue it in right, right there and then. So I'm just going to give that just a little tweak just to hold the damn thing together. Now I'll go through and put some more stanchions on bit by bit by bit. Then we'll do this cab connection. So here we are up to this little bend right there. And all you got to do is a little... What is that, a 30, a 27, maybe it's a 54. Little bend, little bend, bring it into the cab up there. You know, this part here is easy. It's these, it's these endy parts that, that make it tough on a guy. So I'm just gonna grab this right past this stanchion. I'm gonna give it a bend up, oh my goodness. Seems like it'd be easier if a guy had a line drawing and then you just made him off the line drawing. I bet you that would. I bet you that would be easier, wouldn't it? Uh, I see that we still need a little more bend to our bend. We need two more degrees because this has got to come up past that line, that hole, because we have to put another bend in it so that it'll go into that hole. How much of a bend? Not very much. I think I'll go just a little bit. There. Yeah. So now I'm going to eyeball 
where this bend is going to go. I suppose my hand keeps getting in the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pliers like where this is going to go straight at. But I got to, of course, go up like this so I can bend it the right direction. And I'm going to give it another bend down. And if you do this right, you'll end up with your wire still going straight. So, yeah, that came out. That came out exactly like I wanted it to. You betcha. Now, I want to cut this probably right in this area. Because we need to give it a bend going down. We need to give it a little mark, too. It's going to bend right, right in that neck of the woods. The railings are on. They're off. They're on. They're off. They're on. And you got really short pieces or you're using hard wire like me. Some guys make these out of brass. And, man, you can... You could really bend those up with your hands. Sometimes you need two pliers. Get in there, bend this one down. Go by and put all these dang stanchions back in. Because like I said, they're in, they're out, they're in. You almost wear the holes out. I'll bet you there's a better way out there. This is just how I go about doing it. So when you get all done, hopefully if you've done it right, it's gonna come out looking like this. Everything's really loose. Making the fronts gonna be the same. Get a couple of these wonderful stanchions in. Give you something to eyeball off of. I noticed these holes down in here. Apparently the original railing was glued in at some time and I can't push them all the way through. So I found me a drill bit measuring for a point zero two four five. So I can go down here and I can clean these holes out so I can push this all the way through the other side. So knocking out this front one, got a shorter piece here. I put a 90 degree bend in it just to go into this cab. So I've got some place to start. And I'm also looking at this other one that I built here. I'm gonna build this little angle of the fedangle right up in this area. So past this front stanchion, just a little bit, we're gonna give it a bend down. Have I ever been down? Ha! <laughs> Till it lines up with this. So once we give it another bend, probably right, you see, I get my hands in the way, probably right here. But I'm gonna have to stand it up like this. And when it's all said and done, we should have ourselves a 90 degree from here to here. Is it? No. A little more? 90? Oh sure, okay. So this is in there, that's over there. Did I overshoot it? Looks like I did a little bit. So we're gonna straighten it out and we'll just take another bite at it. Because I was just off by some. Because what I'm looking for is I'm eyeballing with these stanchions right here. Looking for it to be straight through there and then really hugging this front this front step right here. Eyeballing it again. Looks like my, my step bend. It's gonna be right about in there. I'm gonna give it a 90 degree in. Chop her off. So we put my stanchions on. There's a chance that this whole thing might actually fit. So we're gonna look kind of like this. The stanchions like to lay down between the body and they will hold that hand railing completely up. So there, there's those. Well, front of cab, rear of cab. Now we need to make one over here. Of course, you know, these guys over here, the exact same. Well, not this one's got a step down in it, like that one. But, you know, this one's got a step down. It's just closer. You just got to eyeball that one. These front and rear hand railings, they're both completely identical. Now, some guys will probably get all crazy. You can and build this one half side and have it stop right here. And then build this other side, you know, it stops right here. Then you can throw in a little chain right in there. And I'm I'm not that motivated. I, you know, I'm I'm not a, I'm, I just can't. I'm just gonna run this straight through. So we're gonna get a short piece of wire here. It looks like I got a bend in this one already. Make this straight. And we're gonna make it look like this. So it's gotta have some curves happening right after those stanchions are sitting there. So I'll just start someplace that looks good. Make sure I leave enough room to drop down to tie into the front. And I'm a guessing we can put this right here and bend it down. Now it's going to have kind of a steep angle, but it's not going to have a 90 degree angle. Making sure this wire is straight so when I bend this other side down. And we'll try to mimic the angles. See, I, I, I blew that. But we're not sure what the angle is going to be quite yet. Looks like this one's not steep enough. Because what we're looking for is it for delay in there like this. And then it's going to straighten out once it gets to this area right in there. Once I'm happy with both my bends being super right on, we're going to figure out where to put the other bend at. And if I'm eyeballing this just right, it looks like it's going to be right about in that area. 
So this will complete the 90 degree. So that way when you look at it, this top piece and this part will be at 90 degrees. Always adjustments to be made. Eyeballing it, going across, give it the bend. Now of course there's gonna be some tweaking. Looking at this, it looks a little, little on the different side. We'll try it again. I guess if a guy really wanted to, you know, know what he's doing, you might get one of these things out, give you some reference. So I'm gonna put those stanchions on, that way I'll know better where to bend the bends, the 90 degree bends to go in right up in here. So now this is in, we can really see where the bends gotta be at to get into these holes which are sitting right there. And it looks like to do it right, you gotta come down off of one side here, and you gotta put a 90, and then you gotta put another dang 90 in it. So we'll work by putting a 90 right here. And we want that to go completely in. So it'll look like this. And then we're going to put another 90, a double 90, bend right in that area. Make sure everybody's straight and square. Here, 90 straight back. So it's gonna have an angle like this. Straight down, straight in, straight over, straight, lots of straight. Cut this down to about a quarter of an inch, I suppose. And then we get to do the exact same thing on the other side. It's like these holes up front need to be drilled out a little also. Got some glue in them. Okay, you see there? Just unbend it, bend it again, and you got it. It looks like I made this one a little wider than this one because everything is just being, being eyeballed. If you look down the top, everything's pretty straight. And once we get these stanchions glued in, in fact, we'll just do that right now. Now this is one of those fancy parts here that you want to make sure you got it right and these things are standing straight up and down. Because it will not look good if they're, well, you know, unless you want broken hand railings on your railroad. And then come by and just give these things just the littlest, tiniest dab of glue up here at the top. I'm going to build the other three railings off camera because they're identical. And then glue them. And then the next, what we're going to do the next day, pull them off, paint them, put them on for final, final done. So these three railings, I probably bet into it now for an hour and a half, but you know, filming it and all the mess ups, but it's the joy of doing it. Yep. Well, now that I've gotten done, building the hand railings that go all the way around it, this is kind of what it'll, it'll look like before paint. So now I got to pull these off and get them prepped up for paint. We're going to paint them a, a flat black so to match the prototype. I tell you, don't, don't, don't work on building railings if you had a really bad day at work and you come home and maybe kick the dog or something like that and wander down into the basement to work on your trains. Because if you're frustrated just a little bit, this will escalate your frustration level. It, it is, it, uh, you need to be nice and relaxed and you got to be in a really good mindset to want to work on these because, yeah, yeah, bro. Pop these railings off the cab. Now we're getting ready to paint them and let them dry for the appropriate amount of time. I always like to rush that a little bit and I end up putting a dang thumbprint somewhere in it. So my, my worst, my worst bad habit is not letting paint dry long enough. Well, by waiting for the paint to dry just enough, little patience getting those railings back on. This is what the old girl looks like when she's all finished up. Here's a picture of what it looked like when we started. So I think we got a successful revival on this classic blue box here. Yes, she does look good. Even from this angle. And, and then this one over here. Yeah, I think it looks good there too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, she even looks good on the track. Well, who would have thunk? I seem to be acquiring a lot of these dang locomotives and I'm running out of space. You think there might be any kind of market I think a guy might be able to put these on eBay and people might want to buy them because they were rebuilt by classic model trains. Throw a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Does anybody out there want to buy some movie star locomotives? Oh, let's just take you and put you right up here in your little space up on the wall. 
So, this is where you live now. Welcome to your new home. That ought to do it for us. I've been working on this video for about four days straight now. It takes me forever to try to figure out how to do all this weird stuff. You know, more, more the, green, the green screen thing. So, <laughs> thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.